Is the role of the barista doomed to become extinct? Is there a Skynet, a judgment day coming, whereby everybody's coffee will be made by robots? This is the topic of this episode. Now I started really thinking hard about this after I watched a speech back in about, I think it was 2015 or 16, uh, and it was a bold title. We were at an event hosted by Lamazocco, who make uh, artisanal handmade coffee machines that are operated by humans. And this talk was entitled, The Death of the Barista. And the angle was pretty clear that uh, ultimately, machines or robots or automated equipment should make our coffee and that that's the future. And this speech made a compelling argument for why not only should this happen, but why they thought it would happen. Because they're two different things, right? What would you like to see happen versus what do you predict will actually happen? Anyway, I believe this topic is actually split up into two concepts. The first one is the very idea of a robot or a machine or some automated system making a better coffee than a human being. This is where the debate centralises most of the time at the moment. And then there's the assumption that if we say, well, yes, a machine should be able to make a better coffee than a human, then we move to the natural assumption, well, in that case, robots will make all our coffee. And I think that assumption is wrong. And in a way, this video is a counter-argument. I gave this speech in Korea in 2017 to argue why I predict that this won't happen at all. And that actually, if you look at the indicators and the behaviour and the culture and the reasoning behind how and why we make coffee, I think actually it's incredibly unlikely to happen. And I actually believe that you've got two things happening at once in the coffee industry. You've got increased automation, but I also believe alongside this, you've got what I would call ultra detail coffee making, which is more manual coffee making. So even less automated, more human input. I believe these two trends are moving alongside each other and I don't believe that they conflict with each other. I actually believe they tell you that there's a core trend here, which is people want better coffee and the format or the method in which that's achieved for you depends on the customer. They're not fighting each other. It's not a fight between the robot and the human barista. Now let's start with this idea of a machine making a better coffee than a human. Now it's been proven in lots of other processes and manufacturing. For all of humans' uh, exceptional wonder and creativity, we tend not to be particularly good at, at recreating and making something consistently to exactly the same parameters time after time after time after time, okay? And especially in the role of the barista, I mean, you know, I've been recently saying yeah, in, in the roastery that I think being a production roaster is ultimately easier than being a great barista. Now, I'm not trying to deride production roasting there. I have a lot of respect. I think to do, an ex I think to do the barista role extremely well is very hard. Uh, and one of the main differences between those two is the fact of distraction. You know, in a, in a cafe environment, your order flow is all over the place, depending on when customers decide to come in, what they order, how they order it. Uh, and it's a real multitasking role, it's multidisciplinary, um, or at least I believe it should be. I do think you can talk to customers at the same time. And that potentially though is where part of that inconsistency comes in. And then also, you know, from a roasting point of view, not only do you not have the customers effectively changing the flow of your day, you can plan your day and say, I'd like to roast this many roasts in a day. And then you can control the interbatch protocol. You can say, well, um, we're going to have this much time between roasts and we're going to get it back to this temperature, etc, etc. Uh, and so that flow of making coffee also doesn't exist in the same way on a coffee bar. But to be honest, the machine would have, a robot or a machine or an automated system would have to deal with that same challenge, which is the ebb and flow of coffee making. Anyway, let's bring this back down to the idea of making coffee. So if budget was no issue. Resource, great thinkers, engineers, inventors. You could just have whoever you want. Yes, I think you could make the most incredible automated machine. But the first problem you have is you have to agree on what the goal is. So we have this problem in coffee, which is part of what makes it fascinating, 
but it's also a challenge, which is the success of any piece of equipment is really determined by us human beings, by whether we think it tastes good. That's quite a subjective field. So really what the machine has to achieve isn't as objective and simple as you might think. And then if you have people in a room and you say, well, okay, what grinder are we going to put into this automated machine? Or do people agree that you should use conical burrs or flat burrs or some other kind of burr? How it brews the coffee, do we agree on that? So you'd have to agree that all other things being equal, we agreed on the type of grinding, the type of brewing, uh, etc. that the machine, that you could design and make a machine that executes the use, that executes the brewing of coffee more consistently than a human being. 100%, you must be able to do that, right? It sort of seems like a strange concept to, do, to debate. The more interesting debate is, when are these machines going to be made? Who's going to make them? I don't believe there's a big debate here about whether a machine could make a better coffee than a human. I think ultimately, in theory, if you could mechanise each part of the process, you should be able to make a machine that beats the human being, right? You should be able to do that. Now, of course, people still point out that the human would continue to use the machine, so almost to be the captain, to direct what the machine does. So, I'd like, this coffee is from Ethiopia, it's more floral, I would like it to be longer. I would like it to be less concentrated, I would like to grind coarser, etc. Then you could go a step further and look at whether there's an interesting element of artificial intelligence, whether you could have AI integrated into a machine to make a lot of those decisions for you, to say, well, statistically, most people like uh, an Ethiopian coffee brewed in this way, and I'm going to brew it in this way. I heard an amazing story recently about artificial intelligence that scans humans' eyes, so the retina, and it had done millions of scans, and the AI could tell you by the retina scan whether the patient or the subject was male or female. And on this podcast, they were saying, we don't know, humans don't know how to differentiate whether someone's male or female based on their retina, but AI's figured it out. It's found something there as a marker that we don't know. That could happen with coffee. You know, the, the AI could learn from our preferences and be one step ahead of us and do a better job of going, oh, well, this is a, a natural coffee roasted in this way from this region. Based on what the AI's learnt, it's going to start with this recipe. So AI's could become better at brewing coffee, not just physically by repeating extraction, but also, I guess, conceptually in terms of building recipes. This same thing could apply to roasting, which is pretty cool, right? Well, I'm lucky enough to be involved in some R&D with uh, effectively biotech and product design team. And there's a lot you could do with coffee, but this brings me on to part of my prediction of why I don't think it will happen. But the challenge here, of course, is someone's got to make it, and to make something, it has to be commercially viable. And what that means, really, is you have to go, well, there's a market for this, I think people will buy this. Uh, very simple equation, you go, okay, it's going to cost us this much to do the R&D, uh, it's then going to cost us this much to manufacture, and we need to sell this many units to first of all recoup our investment and then make it sustainable to manufacture and make it profitable. I bring that up because I think this is one of the main reasons that you'll see a lack of technology sort of across coffee going to that degree, right, which is healthcare measuring people's eyes and illnesses. There's so much value if AI can identify that you have cancer early or a certain disease or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Is there enough value in improving an extraction by a standard a small standard deviation or um, building recipes that are better and that people notice, right? The question is, is there enough value there? Could it do it better enough to be worth it creating, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey version of a barista, of a coffee brewer? And that brings me to what I see in a lot of coffee, which is, you know, the equipment and the manufacturing is actually quite traditional, quite basic. People talk about how a grinder hasn't really evolved. 
in many, many decades. If I was, if so, if I was involved in a team that said, look, we're going to get machines to do all these amazing things, right? It's going to cost this much. And then do we think there's an audience for it? I, as part of someone on that team, would put my hand up and say, I don't think there's an audience for this. I don't think there's a big enough audience for this to be worth it, for this machine to be made. Right? And I give you this because who's going to buy it? The people who are going to value the improved cut quality, all the detail, the sophistication, well, they're going to be people who would self-identify as coffee enthusiasts, uh, as experts, as specialists, as part of the specialty coffee community. And are they going to buy a fully automated machine? I would say no. And so the company's looking to fully automate coffee and, and make the, the ultimate coffee brewing machine. They have a problem. Their customer base isn't the detail orientated specialty scene. And, and this really brings me on to the second topic of if a machine can create a better coffee than a human, I don't think everybody would use machines. Like if you look at this elsewhere in food and drink, these things are experiential. And whether the scientist in you or the data analyst in you likes this or not, it matters to people how something was made. The end result is not the driving force or the sole driving force most of the time. In fact, I think since COVID's happened, this has been proved to be the case even more. The boom of specialty coffee at home, sage machines, manual, manual coffee making equipment. Now, of course, there's something happening there, right? Which is somebody saying, oh, the cafe's closed. What do I do? Uh, I'll ask my coffee geek friend how I'm going to replicate the coffee from the cafe. And then they speak to that friend and they tell them to buy an espresso machine and a grinder and freshly roasted beans and uh, some filtered water. And this is how they do it. So it's basically a cycle which continues to encourage people who are seeking great coffee to make it in a certain way. And that is often the challenge the industry has in general, which is everybody agrees on some rough parameters and then you sit back one day and go, why are we doing all of these things? Do we need to do them all? But I also believe there's something bigger happening there in terms of why people suddenly went from going, I don't have the time to make great coffee at home and convenience is king, to going, well, actually, this small slice of my day to do something physical, analog and manual is, is great. You know, I've, I'm down the gym and there's people saying to me they've gotten into coffee making during COVID, most of them because of James Huffman's YouTube channel. But the interesting thing is they find it enjoyable. They look forward to that moment every day. And a lot of this, I think, with the, the growth of the specialty coffee movement, you could probably draw comparisons to other movements, such as the resurgence in vinyl, right? The sophistication of music playing equipment has never been so great, whether you use Spotify, whether it's on your phone, whether it's in your ear pods, uh, whatever system you've got it on, at the same time as those systems have become the most sophisticated, there's also been a resurgence in the most analog, the most simple ways of listening to music, which is vinyl, right? And it's because like, why do we, you know, these different things, whether it's coffee or music, these are experiential things, they're analog things, right? And making them fully digital, yes, it can have some benefits, but they're also an opportunity for people to balance out their busy digital lives with something analog, with a hobby, with something they can engage with. There's all sorts of um, theories and books written about using your hands and, and why that's good for your brain. I think there's one book called The Craftsman that's really good about that. So I do think that there's a huge swathe of people who want to make coffee and there's an appreciation piece there. You make something and you realise what goes into it and you appreciate it more. Take instant coffee for example. I mean, who really appreciates instant coffee? <laughs> no one. When you realise what goes into making, you're like, wow. Instant coffee potentially is one of the most sophisticated ways of making coffee in terms of supply chain, but the least engaging, sophisticated and value driven from a customer point of view because they don't see that. 
And this is fascinating, whether we're talking about adding flavour to a fermentation tank uh, or latte art. What, what people perceive to be the journey of the product is important to them. It, they're making decisions based on values they have, and it's not as simple as what's in the cup. So for example, we did this sensory assessment where we got a room of about 50 people, split them in half, and made them all flat whites, made it with the same espresso and the same steamed milk. Half the room, we, uh, sorry, and for half the room, we did latte out on the drinks, and for the other half of the room, we didn't. And to our surprise, there wasn't a massive change in perceived quality, so nobody seemed to be tricked. People believed they were of a similar quality, they scored them in a similar way. But the fascinating piece for me was that the group with latte art on, on average, were willing to pay 60p more for the drink. Not because they think the latte art made it better, but because they know that the time and energy went into creating that, that a human made that. And there's probably a very basic thing there, right, of going, you know, I know that that costs more to make, therefore I'll pay more for it. And the interesting thing there is people aren't just seeking the best quality at the lowest price, or the most efficiently, or the most economically. I guess the fascinating question there would be, if a robot could do latte art for you, would you still pay the extra 60p? But let's go to cafes. I think a lot of people who watch my videos work in coffee, maybe have had a role of a barista. And when I did this talk in Korea in 2017, it was about the barista. And a lot of people in the room were talking about training and you know, if, if robots take over, they're training people to be baristas now and that skill set is lost. I really just don't think this will happen. Back to the beginning of this episode, do I think somebody's going to make, you know, do I think somebody's going to make the SpaceX of a coffee machine? Probably not. I just don't see where the overlap of the Venn diagram in the marketplace for it to be worth someone's, you know, money to do that. <laughs> so I think there's always limitations all over coffee. You know, I see this in the pattern line that we bought. I'm like, well, that's ridiculous that you have to take off the reel and do all of that. But no one's going to improve it because someone buys one of these machines every five years. And it's not consumer driven enough like apps and data, you know, for it to change. It's not competitive enough. That's the other really interesting thing, right? You know, I think you'd need a more competitive marketplace to drive that automation, which I don't think you have in coffee, not as much. And quite frankly, there's just not as much money in coffee. Um, what I'd like to move on to now is this idea that automated equipment could improve coffee shop experiences. I'm really not sure about this at all. But before I move on to that, I want to touch on that value piece. Normally, where technology really takes over is where it, you know, it's really the industrial revolution. It's where you can do something far better than it was done manually or analog. It will bring the price down, it will improve the quality, and it really would make no sense to do it any other way. I'm not sure that a machine would make coffee way better than a human being, enough to add enough value for the investment of basically making an army of coffee robots. But I'm also not sure it would bring the price down that much. You still need human beings to serve people. People want to be served by humans. And this is what we're going to talk a bit about now, is you know the experience of a cafe. And this is why I don't think since that talk in 2015-16, it's five, six years on, we really haven't seen much automation at all. And so one of the arguments made at that 2015-2016 talk was automation would be great because it means the barista can focus on the customer, a bit more like a sommelier and not brewing coffee. I disagree with that entirely. First of all, I don't think the reason that a coffee shop has incredible service and a customer experience is to do with whether you have to brew the coffee or whether a robot brews it. It's about the people serving you. And there's no difference whether that's a handmade coffee or a robot. In fact, I would argue that you're more likely to have engaged staff, engaged baristas and people working if they do make it. I got into coffee when I was working in a restaurant in Melbourne and I had to make it and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And it, it forced me to be engaged. I had to learn and think about it. Would I be as into coffee as I am now and as passionate about it if I didn't have to do that? I don't know. Maybe it never would have caught me. Anyway, 
But I think in general, what I don't like about the automation piece and what people think it will add to the industry is the idea that great coffee would be everywhere if we simply had robots to make it. And the idea that training baristas is the main problem. That's really not the main problem, is it? The, the main problem is the quality of the coffee in the hopper. When I go to an airport lounge and I have an atrocious coffee, it's not because the automated machine uh, is so much worse than making it than a human would be at this moment in time. It's because the coffee in the hopper is really not very good, right? And when we come back to specialty cafes, their main problem is the value prop in general is, you know, cafes are not focused on taking people through a menu of coffee like wine. People, other people in coffee have often said, it's a fast food experience. It's quick, it turns over, you get a takeaway, you meet your friend, you sit down, you turn over the covers for however three pound a cup. That's what you need to do, right? And any kind of in-depth wine-like experience of coffee will be niche. And I don't believe that automation is going to improve that in any way whatsoever. In fact, I actually think it was just going to take away some of the value. But let's do a comparison. You walk into a typical third way coffee shop. There's two scenarios here. There's Peter, who's a human barista. Uh, he's been making coffee for a few years, uh, runs his own uh, Instagram uh, page on the, the coffee he's interested in, is tasting, super passionate about it, uh, and finds his job interesting because he's learning to be a better barista, takes part in competitions, or, or turns up at you know, last hour smackdowns and the like, uh, versus Melissa, who is a state-of-the-art robot, the ultimate coffee machine, the, the best technology ever to make a cup of coffee. Now, theoretically, Melissa should make a better coffee than Peter, no offense, Peter. And anyway, you walk into this cafe, and uh, you've got the typical menu that you'd expect, espresso, flat white, piccolo, some brewed coffee. The customer walks in and they say, can I have a flat white, please? And if Peter's on the bar, the human, he's gonna make it for you. You're gonna watch him make it. Some bars display the making of the coffee more than others. Um, maybe he's gonna to talk to you. If you're interested, you're gonna ask him some questions about the coffee and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the kind of experience that's possible there. Now, I appreciate that there is an experience which is less favourable, which is baristas who don't want to talk to you, etc. But anyway, this is this is the problem with people, not robots. Robots don't solve that <laughs> yet. Um, anyway, alternatively, you walk in and um, Melissa is making the coffee. Now, in a fully automated environment, you press a button on Melissa. Maybe Melissa says, "Welcome. What would you like today?" And you order a flat white, right? But the most likely example of automated machines replacing baristas is you still need a server. So Peter's still there, really. He's just been usurped by Melissa, who's making the coffee now, the robot. And you walk up to Peter and you say, can I have a flat white, please? And he goes, yeah. And then he just presses a button on Melissa and a flat white comes out. That's really how the experience changes if you fully automate that. So I believe you actually just lose a lot of value by fully automating that. Okay. But also the brewing of coffee is a conversation. And by that, I would say that coffee brewing now, even though technology has advanced, is typically in specialty coffee shops, more manual than before. So when I got into coffee in Melbourne, my first job was like, fill up the grinder to the top, little dosing chamber, tick, tick, in, tap, I mean, it wasn't great. But that was a pretty simple process. It was very speed orientated. Now, although there is more technology in coffee brewing, I would actually argue that the brewing of the coffee from the bean turning up in a bag to ending up in someone's cup has typically got more complex. We introduced more measurements, more scales. But also we keep it deconstructed for a reason because it allows us to separate our variables. Now, of course, I'm talking about geeky baristas here and geeky coffee people, but that is the community we're talking about here. And I want to be able to go, well, look, if I've got a separate grinder and it's not part of a big machine, I can put individual doses through it. I can freeze that coffee. I can spray that coffee. By having it deconstructed, it allows me or the barista or whoever to be in control of adding something into that process, taking something away. And that is generally the problem with fully automated systems, 
is you create a system to take away the human, and it means you have to make choices when you're designing that product, right? To reduce the choice. Now, of course, you could say, well, okay, well, why don't we just put all that in there? You could have frozen beans, you could do all this stuff, but again, I just don't think that's plausible or feasible. I don't think anyone's gonna make that machine. So the reality of automation in coffee is where is it going? Well, it's not going anywhere particularly surprising. Improved automation, I think, means something very simple in specialty coffee. It means that quality-driven producers and roasters can have their coffee presented to customers closer to its best optimal presentation, its best cut profile in more environments. That's really what it means. It isn't a battle, I don't think, between an automated robot coffee making god to <laughs> battle the human barista. They actually can, they, I think they actually live symbiotically side by side. It opens up the opportunity to put a really interesting coffee in an environment where you're not going to hire a barista. And you know, from a fully commercial point of view, you know, this is most beneficial in a shop that isn't doing 200 cups of coffee a day. Because if it's doing 200 cups of coffee a day, it can invest in its people to make that. Where automation is nearly always considered is, is in a place that does a lot less cups a day, where the primary goal of the business or the environment isn't to make coffee. I don't know, it could be a cinema, a restaurant, it could be an aeroplane. This is where automation is interesting, where the idea of training someone to be a master of making coffee is just not plausible, it's just ridiculous. And that's where automation has its place. And to be honest, automation is already there. What's exciting, I think, is that it can get better and better and better and better. I think really the reality isn't when's judgment day for robots to take over. Really the judgment day is when will Speciality Coffee feel confident enough in the automated brewing systems in different environments to be confident and happy with the quality of coffee that's being produced in those environments. That's really, it's, it's more of a catch up game rather than you know, a worry about being usurped. I, I think that's the future of automation in coffee. Now, this episode uh, was always going to be a bit of a ramble. Hopefully my new mic has uh, made the audio clearer, but it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a huge topic and, and I'd love to hear what you think in the, in the comments below. And so ultimately this is where I end up on automation. I don't think it's as dramatic or polarizing or grandiose as the death of the barista and the robots taking over. But it is interesting. How will technology, new things that haven't been invented yet, but also new concepts about coffee, you know, where, as we change the way we think about coffee and as we learn new things about coffee, we change what we want from our equipment. And will there be, you know, phase changes, big changes in the way coffee is made and the equipment and the technology we use to make coffee. When I gave the talk in Korea about five years ago, I said at the end of the talk that this was my prediction. I'd like to look back in five years and see whether I was right or whether I was completely wrong. And that my talk wasn't about what I wanted, whether I wanted machines to take over or whether I wanted humans to make the co coffee. I was looking at the behavior of what we value in coffee and trying to predict the future. Now, uh, I, I feel pretty smug because I predicted uh, that automation wouldn't take over and that we would value humans a lot in coffee making and the role of the barista was super important. And I, I think that's what's transpired in five years. Maybe we need longer. Maybe I need to say, let's come back to this video in 10 years time and see how automation and how technology is changing the way we interact with coffee and uh, whether you still want a human to make it for you.